What is good, y'all? You already know how we coming. Your boy just finished his last haircut here at the shop. Um, right now, it's about, I would say, oh, it's 8.19. And I started here at the shop at 8 o'clock this morning. So it has been a very, very, very long day. And your boy is ready to smash, right? But before we get into this tutorial, I wanted to kind of share something with you guys. Um, it's been on my mind since yesterday, right? And the phrase that came to me was um, to just commit. Right? And y'all, I feel you, right? It's hard to make the choice to commit to something. Because to commit to something means to give full effort, 120% to that thing, to that dream. Right? And a lot of times we're scared to make the choice because it's like, man, if I give all that I am to this thing, if I get 120% to this goal or this dream and this other person and it doesn't work, like, what am I going to do? And y'all, I feel you. I genuinely understand how hard it is to make that decision. But if you don't try, you will never know. And that's just as bad as giving 120% to that thing and it not working out, right? Because the worst thing that could happen is it doesn't work out. And you know what you do after that? You go again, you try again, right? So family, just commit. Commit to that goal, commit to that dream, commit to the other person. Just commit. Oh. what is good today we are going to be doing kind of a low to mid fade uh, on a comb over that when we style it we're gonna add some volume in the front but to start off this cut we're gonna go ahead and saturate the hair and allow it to lay in its natural direction and before we get into the scissor cutting we're gonna go ahead and comb the hair forward still allowing it to lay you know where it wants to and then we're gonna go ahead and create three sections one on the right side of the head one in the middle of the head and then one on the left side of the head and you want to make sure that the sections are as clean as possible so go ahead and go over it you know as much as you have to because that's kind of the foundation for the scissor work so you can follow your guideline so we did the right side and now we're going to the left side and then we're going to leave that small portion there in the middle Alright, and I didn't catch uh, that part, I didn't notice that my camera wasn't recording, but I went ahead and cut <clears throat> that, that middle guideline, which I'm pointing out right here, and I took about a half an inch off, and then we combed it over to the right, and now we're going to take horizontal sections, and we're just going to follow that guideline that we created in the middle, and there you can see the length difference, and then we're just going to, uh, you know, cut it so it's all the same length, and then we're going to follow that all the way to the front of the head another horizontal section we're gonna go ahead and pull that up and then you can see that middle guideline that we created and then we're just connecting that with the right side it's important to stay organized when you're doing scissor work so you don't get lost you feel me because if you don't see a length difference you should not cut it and right there you can really see where the middle guideline is at and then we're just connecting it and we're just staying as clean as possible with this And I'm using six inch shears. They're nothing special. They're just some cheap ones from Sally's. So they're not anything. They're not like, you know, Hanzo shears or nothing like that. They're real cheap. And then everything that we did on that right side of the head, we're going to do on the left. So we're going to take a section of that right side and comb it over to his left side. Making sure that that part or that section is as clean as possible. And then again, we're just going to do horizontal uh, sections on the other side of the head. And then we're just going to follow that guideline that we created in the middle. As you can see. And then we're just going to go ahead and connect that. Yeah. 
and for me, I know learning, you know, to cut hair, this was probably, when I was learning to cut hair, this was probably, you know, the most difficult uh, thing to learn was my scissor work, my shear work, whatever you want to call it. But this is the simplest way I could find to get an even cut on top instead of just pulling straight front to back and guessing where to cut, you know what I mean? But this is the simplest way that I've found so far. You always want to keep learning and see if there's a system that works better for you. But so far, this is what's working for me, so I hope this helps you. I'm just doing the same thing throughout the entire head. And again, if you do not see a length difference, don't cut it. Because then you're just going to create, you know, some unevenness in the cut. And you want to make sure that everything is nice and even. And we follow that all the way to the front of the head. So we're just connecting it once again. And I'm just going through the hair and making sure it's as even as possible. And now we're going to take a portion of the fringe area and just comb that forward. And this is where it's going to lay. You know, if you were just to let it, you know, loose one day and not style it. And you just want to make sure that those front hairs are as even as possible as well. And he wanted it to sit a little bit above his eyebrows. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to comb it in its natural direction, allow it to lay. And now we're going to go ahead and style it with our blow dryer. And the reason I did the shear work first is because now uh, we can get into the fade and we know exactly what we're blending into. You know what I mean? Because if we were to do the fade first, um, we might struggle with knowing where to stop so we can keep enough weight along the ridge area. You know what I mean? So this ensures that since we already cut the top, we know exactly what we're blending into. So we're just a little bit safer so we don't take off too much hair. You feel me? But we're just going ahead and we're not going to style it style it yet we're just kind of you know trying to get it as dry as possible and allow it to lay nicely before we get into the fade and i'm just pulling up the hair trying to just give it you know a little bit of volume and some shape to it All right, so to get into the fading process, we're just gonna start by getting rid of some, some weight or some hair. So we have a much cleaner canvas to start our fading process. So we're going with our two guard all the way open and this will be the biggest guard that we use. And you can see I'm dropping it a little bit towards the back just because I wanna leave some length there in the crown area. So it lays a lot nicer, right? Because if we were to chop it off, it might look good for that couple of days but as soon as it starts growing back there's gonna be a lot of stick up hairs and you know we don't want that you know what i mean we want to make sure that we're giving a client the client a haircut that lasts them as long as possible and that fits their head shape you know very well so i'm just creating that shape with my two guard open getting rid of some weight and then we're just gonna drop it in the back just so we can ensure that we're leaving some length back there All right, now to start the fade, we're gonna go with our uh, trimmer and we're gonna make our first bald line. And you can see, as I set this guideline, I'm still keeping that same exact shape that, that I made with my two guard open to where we drop it in the back. And I'm just making sure that this line is consistent as I can possibly get it. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you wanna make sure that it has a shape, you know what I mean, that, that you can follow and not so choppy so you want to make sure it's as clean as you can get it and then we're just going to go ahead and bought it all the way out and we're going to follow it up with our shaver just to you know give some longevity to the haircut and uh, it, this allows the fade to pop a lot more just because there's a a lot more gradients to it it goes from skin all the way to the length on top and it just makes that fade pop
all right and now to follow that up we're gonna go with our clipper all the way open setting in our first guideline and we're going up a little bit <clears throat> below a full inch but you'll see on the side of the head it's a lot thinner than in the back of the head so i widen up that guideline in the back of the head just because there's a lot more surface area or canvas to blend and as well this gives me <clears throat> you know a better chance of being able to create a nice transition into that length on top because in the back of the head there's the occipital bone and it, it it causes like dark spots that you know cause a challenge depending on the head shape to blend out so this just gives me more room to make sure that i have a nice blend that transitions well into the top so i'm just going over that guideline making sure it's as even as possible and now i'm using my trimmer and just slightly tapping that line between the bald and open and this is going to allow me to take that line out just a little bit easier with my clipper. And I'm just slightly tapping that line. And now we're going to follow it up with our clipper closed. And then I'll gradually open that lever as I move up to the top of that guideline. And when I do that, it'll slowly but surely start to get blended out. So I'm going in closed and then I'll open the lever gradually as needed. And then in those areas that are a little bit tighter to blend out, you'll see me use the corner of the blade just so I don't take off too much air, you feel me? But I'm just going over making sure that, you know, it's taken out as best as possible. And now right above that, we're going to go with our one guard all the way open, going up about the same distance. And then we're making that guideline just a little bit thicker towards the back of the head, but we're keeping that same shape where we drop it in the back. And you can see as we move on step by step in our fading process this fade starts to fit his head shape a lot better and now between that open and one open we're gonna go with our half guard all the way open and then we'll close it gradually as needed until that line is as blended out as possible so right there i close the lever up just slightly and you can see that line starts to lighten up And I still see a slight line that the half guard couldn't get. So I'm just using the corner of my blade just to get into those darker areas and line them up. And now again, we grabbed our two guard all the way open, which is going to be the biggest guard that we use. And I'm just uh, going up, you know, a little bit wider than we, we made all the guidelines. But as we get towards the top of it, I'm flicking out just so when we follow it up with clipper over comb and shear over comb, it's just a little bit easier to blend. And now right under that, we're going to go with our one and a half open and then we'll gradually close the lever until that line is as blended out as possible. And you can see as we do that, it starts to come together. The fade starts to look a little bit more like a fade. You know what I'm saying? But we're just staying real patient with it, trying to get it looking as blurry as we can. And if the, the one and a half doesn't do the job, we'll grab our one guard all the way open and just attack that line. And right here, you can kind of see that divot or that dark spot that the occipital bone is creating. So that's what I mean when I say I, I kind of stretched out my guidelines just so I have a lot more room to blend that out. You feel me? And again, uh, there's a slight dark spot that I want to attack. So I'm using my lever all the way open using the corner of the blade. And what that does is allow you to go into those areas where we use the bigger guard and lighten them up. And now I'm pointing out the weight that we're going to use clip over comb to blend into. So I'm going in with the comb and then I'm flaring out slightly. And any hair sticking out of the comb, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of. And you can see as we do that, 
<clears throat> it starts to blend into that length very nicely. And to soften that up, we'll come in with, uh, you know what I mean, thinning shears or shears, just to give it a little bit of a softer blend. And clipper over comb also just saves a lot of time instead of, you know, grabbing bigger guards and and trying to blend into that length. Just grab your clipper over comb and that just blends into the top a lot nicer than guards would and saves some time. So I'm just going into those dark areas and just trying to blend into that length. And it's starting to come together very nicely. And now we're going to go to the opposite side of the head and we're going to do the same exact things. Same exact fading process. So we're going in with our clipper all the way open and we're keeping that same exact shape to where we drop it in the back and then I'll widen it up as we move, you know, towards the back. And now to slightly, uh, you know, lighten up that line and get it a little bit easier to get out with my clipper, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap that line. And this is just gonna soften it up so when we come in with our clipper, you know, it's that much easier to get rid of. But I wanted to share with you guys that starting September 14th, I will not be in the barbershop that I'm currently at, family. Uh, your boy actually got a little studio space or a loft in a salon loft. And um, what kind of really pushed it was, um, I wanted to have an area to where, you know, I could create a lot more content and also provide a more exclusive experience to where I could offer more services like facials and and I can shampoo every cut and it just makes it a little bit easier if I have a space of my own and it's also going to be kind of that stepping stone before I open up my own shop you know what I'm saying so starting September 14th I will be in a salon loft so my content level I feel like it's going to go up a lot and uh that whole moving process here in a couple weeks I'm going to vlog so you guys you guys will see the whole uh you know setup process uh, to me decorating and and stuff like that in my new loft so look out for that but i really plan with this space to take my youtube to another level to drop the, drop a lot more content so be on the lookout for that but i'm i'm like mad excited to get into those this studio space uh just to have you know kind of something of my own you feel me so look be on the lookout for that family but right here we're going in with our one guard all the way open again keeping that same shape And if you're new to my channel, please go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know how, if this tutorial is adding any value to you, if it's helping you. And if it is, make sure you hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel when you, you know, hit that subscribe button and like button because it allows more people to view my content and just add more value to others. You know what I'm saying? And if you haven't already, please go follow me on Instagram at Drake Clipper Hands. And on there, I post daily content, pictures, videos, you know, personal life stuff. And I'm just trying to hit 10K. Today, I actually hit 8,000 uh, followers. And you guys know, when I started off the year, one of my biggest goals was to hit 10K on Instagram as well as on YouTube. And I hit it on YouTube a lot quicker than I hit it on Instagram, which I did not expect. So we have, you know, what? A, how many months? Like five to six months left of the year, and I'm really trying to hit 10K. So if you haven't already, please go follow me at Drake Clipper Hands. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So yeah. And then right under that two guard all the way open, we're going to go with our one and a half open, and then we'll close it gradually as needed. And you can really see that blend starts to come together, start to take place, you know what I'm saying? And it's all about just staying patient, trusting the system and the process that you have in place and executing on it, right? And we're just detailing as we go. And now to blend into that length on top, we're again going to go in with a clipper over comb. And I'm going in with my comb, uh, the comb and flaring out slightly. And then any hair sticking out of the comb, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of. So if you put <clears throat> that comb again, flat against the head like I'm doing right there, the comb against the head is basically a one guard. 
So you know you're basically using a one guard to blend into that length on top. You know what I'm saying? And that really helped me when I was doing clip over comb because I was scared to take off too much hair. So knowing that the comb flat against the head is a one guard helps a lot. And now we're just doing thin, uh, you know, using our thinning shears just to soften it up and blend into that length a lot better. And it, again, it's still the same thing as we do with clip over comb. We're going ahead with the comb and flaring out slightly. And that just blends into the length very nicely. And now to line up that uh, that little arch area, because he doesn't get anything crazy. It's a very natural look. We're going to start at the top of the arch, go to the bottom of the arch and connect it in the middle. And that's how you get that nice round shape or arch shape that we all desire. You know what I mean? And now we're gonna go ahead and style the hair. I blow dried it again, added some vol uh, volume in the front, and we're just using a paste just to give it some hold and some shine. It's not too shiny, it's more of a matte paste, but this kind of just tops it off the cherry on top. And you can see that shape of the style and that blend looks very nice, very clean, natural, no enhancements, but my man came in looking rough. And we went ahead, trimmed them up, and got them together. If this video, help, video helps you in any way, shape, or form, make sure you leave a comment. Hit that like and subscribe button. Go ahead and follow me at Drake Clipper Hands with family. Thank you for watching my video. Catch y'all next time.